Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School, back out here with part two of our video on making powder. Today we're gonna to talk about how to improve that powder. It's very simple to make improvements in that powder to make it much faster and burn much better for us. One thing I wanna talk about today is real quick, I want to, because this will be probably released on Christmas, I wanted to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas and thank you for all the support that you've given me over the years and just you know, wish you a Merry Christmas. One thing that's really funny, I was thinking about it this morning. The two, one of the things that we all kind of associate with Christmas, if you watch old movies and things like that at Christmas, is the Red Ryder BB gun. You know, you know, shoot your eye out, kid. And I'll tell you, I had a Red Ryder BB gun in a gun rack in my room the entire time I was growing up. I, it was the very first gun I ever got was a Red Ryder BB gun. And incidentally, the second gun I ever got I think I was nine or 10 years old Christmas morning. I got an H&R single shot, 12 gauge. And that gun has stuck with me my entire life. It's still the most used gun that I own is an H&R single shot, 12 gauge. So anyway, I just thought that was an interesting fact to talk to you guys about this morning in this video since we're talking about the 21st Century Long Hunter Series and the single shot, 12 gauge is such a big part of that for me. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to improve on the powder that we made so that it is high quality, fast burning black powder. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna change a couple things that we're doing. Number one, we're going to use a different milling method. We're gonna use an actual rock tumbler and lead balls to really grind that stuff together and mix it well. And we're gonna do it for several hours instead of just a few minutes at a food processor. You can make crude rudimentary black powder pretty fast. I showed you that in part one of this video. Part two, we're gonna make some really good black powder. We're gonna mill it first, and then we're going to wet mix it with alcohol, 91% isopropyl alcohol. We're gonna wet mix it, and then we're going to granulate it so that it's fairly even in size. We're gonna let that dry, and then we're going to test that and see how it does. Now, there are a couple other steps that you could take. You can compress this stuff with a heavy press of some kind into a puck and let that dry and then granulate from that puck and that will make it slightly faster. But I can tell you that this method that we're using today will make fast enough black powder for you to shoot out of any shotgun or muzzleloader that you want to use it in. So stay with me, we'll get started. Okay, this time we used exactly the same process to make our powder pre-mill. So before we processed it at all, we used exactly the same methodology. Now, I've got some black powder balls. These are 54 caliber balls, a whole box of them, about a hundred of them in there. I put them in a Harbor Freight rock tumbler and added the powder to that rock tumbler and I'm tumbling it for four hours. This will give me a much better refined mix by using a milling machine like this to mill all those components together. It should give us a lot faster burning powder in the end as well. Remember that the last time we used a food processor, and we only processed it for a couple, three minutes, maybe five minutes. This is gonna be three, four hours of milling and grinding with lead balls. Okay, so here's our milling jar. I'm outdoors, remember that, I am outdoors. So I don't have a lot of the PPE on that you should have on if you're doing this indoors for sure, because there is gonna be some dust that's gonna come out of this when we get it opened up. This thing right here is no easy trick to get out. All right. Now, we're gonna take this mill dust, we're gonna pour it through a screen and collect it on something real quick. I'm just gonna use a large mesh screen here so that I can collect this up and have the balls not fall through. So there's my milled dust, and I'll put my lead balls 
right back in the mill. And we'll store them in there for the next time. These Harbor Freight uh, rock tumblers come with a few extra seals and things with them. They're pretty nice, actually, for the $50 price tag on them. They're definitely not a bad way to go if you're going to be doing very much of this. And you can also tumble rocks in them for your kids as well. All right. Set that out of the way. Now we've got our mill dust here. Now what we need to do is we're going to test some of this mill dust first. I'm going to take some of this over and we'll hit it with a ferro rod. Show you what it sparks like. And then we're going to go to the next level with this and add some alcohol to it. Compress it a little bit and run it through a screen to granulize it. So hang tight. All right. So here's a little bit of dust right out of the mill without any further processing. You'll see the difference right off between this and the stuff we did in just a regular food processor. Much, much faster. All right, just for demonstration purposes, beyond the ferro rod on the pile of dust, before I ever process this any further down, I'm gonna take a measure of this right off the top, fill up a powder measure with it, Put it in a shotgun shell. I'm gonna reload this shotgun shell exactly the way I've loaded them in the past and shoot this out of a 12 gauge and see what we get. And then we'll shoot another one after we finish the powder. But I wanna see what we get at this point as fast as that powder was on the concrete. All right, so I loaded that about halfway up with shot and a full load of powder and i've got a tin can sitting on a stump all right well there's one two three four side by side center mass of that bad boy almost but again very few pellets in there full load of shot i just wanted to see what it was going to do and that stuff is pretty heavy duty right now before it's granulated Okay, now as you can see with this stuff, it's lots and lots of different sizes. That's the reason for granulating it for the most part. Because now you have everything from dust to chunks. And if you're going to get consistent black powder, you want something that's consistently sized. There's a couple different ways we can do that. We're going to take the shortest method, which is just to mix it with something and make a wet mix. And then grind that through a sifter. That's the right size we want it to be. And that will give us even granules for the most part. All right, you can see that just the milling process alone has supercharged this stuff, okay? But now, we're gonna take it one step further. We're gonna use some 91% isopropyl alcohol. And we're gonna do what's called a wet mix. Now, we're not gonna compress this, okay? If you compress this, I'm told you can make it even faster. I don't have any way to compress it. You need a, some kind of a setup with a jack of some kind or something that you can put a few tons of pressure on it, turn it into a puck, and then break it up. I'm not going to worry about that. As fast as this is all by itself, I'm not worried about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a pair of gloves here because I'm going to mix this by hand into a ball similar to clay. And then I'm going to classify it through a classifier to granulize it. And it's just a classifier right off of Amazon, the same one I used a second ago. This has got like eighth inch screen holes in it, I think, something like that. Now, I'm going to take this dust and I'm going to get it all in a container here. I'm going to leave myself a little bit on this board just in case I go over the top with my alcohol. And now we're going to take this alcohol and we're going to spray some in here and we're going to mix it around. Now, if you do this, you see the dust coming out of there. You got to be kind of careful with this. If you're going to compress this stuff, you don't need to use near as much alcohol. You just use enough to keep it from dusting up. 
and then you can press it. If you're going to do it by hand, like we're gonna do, you've gotta get it a lot wetter. And then you've gotta have time for it to dry. So either way, it's gotta have dry time. But this way I feel it dries faster because it's spread out. And right now we just showed it's pretty fast. So if it's much faster, it's gonna be extremely fast. And I'm gonna be extremely happy. And it'll be easy enough to make some homebrew black powder that we can use to reload shotgun shells or in our shotgun as a muzzle loader or in any of our muzzle loaders that we happen to have, for that matter. If you're not old enough to know what Silly Putty is, I don't know what to tell you. Sorry about your luck. And I'm just mixing this around my hands and getting it, everything out of the cracks and the corners now. The, off the sides. Probably could have used a round bowl for this, not have done myself a favor, but sometimes hindsight's 2020. Getting pretty close here to what we want. I kind of want a little bit of a shine on this ball when I'm done. And I'm just kind of compressing it like a snowball in my hand. I still got quite a bit of dry stuff here in, in this. So I don't quite have enough alcohol in here yet. So I'm just going to put a little bit more in there. Not much, but a little. And just keep mixing it down. Now we're just going to set that down for a second. And we're going to... We got a little bit in there. Let's put that off to the side here. Won't throw that away for sure. All right, I'm gonna set this ball down for just a second here and get things together to granulate this. I'm gonna save this dust that I just made that I didn't use here for the next time around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this ball and transfer it onto the table here real quick. I'm gonna transfer this dust into here and I'll mix it with my next batch of mill dust that I'll use the same exact measurements and things on so it'll be the same consistency the next batch of powder. Stuff's not gonna go bad. So I'm just gonna press this a little bit more with my hands. Snowball effect. Pressing it down pretty hard. Okay. Still got that sheen to it. Now I'm just gonna set this on top of here and I'm gonna start to run this ball over the top. And start to granulate this out like this. And you can see what I'm getting there. A little thicker grains than the dust, which is what we're trying to avoid. We want our grains to be fairly uniform, not a bunch of dust. And that's really the purpose of all of this. The alcohol may make it a little faster. I've heard both directions on that, whether it does or it doesn't. But what we're trying to avoid is having inconsistency in our batch. And by doing this granulation process, we're hoping that most of the batch is going to be the same size. Okay. Pretty much got it all out of the screen now. Now we should have a pretty consistent batch. on this platform. And now we just need to let that dry completely. That may take 24 hours. We can set that directly in the sun and it won't matter. All right, so we granulated our powder and we've let it dry overnight to let the alcohol evaporate and let it dry out. And so now we should have a good dust here. That's all nice and dry, a good powder I should say, that's all nice and dry. What we wanna do now is we still want to go through here and refine our grating, if you will, of this powder and get rid of any dust that we may have and only keep the good powder. Now, we're not gonna throw it away. We're gonna reuse it, but we're gonna store them in two different places. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a fine mesh screen here and I've got the powder here that was left over from yesterday's batch that's been ground, just like this has, in the mill. 
and it can be used. It just needs to have the alcohol added to it and it needs to be granularized. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one container for good, ready to use black powder and one for stuff that we need to run through again through the process. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this stuff by the scoop and I'm gonna put it in here. And I'm gonna sift it through this sifter over the top of this one here to get rid of any dust. So that all I have left in there is similar size granules that won't fit through this screen. And I'm not gonna get real fussy with it. And I'm gonna put those grains in there. And then I'm gonna start over. And I'm gonna do that until I go through all of this powder. Now any residue that's left on the board, I'll try to get it as best I can into this one that's powder. And again, remember, we can still use this. So we'll just set this aside. We'll add to it when we make another batch and we'll granulize it. Granulate it, I guess that's the word, granulate. I'm not real good at English sometimes. And what we have left now is the powder that we can use for shooting. Okay, so we have our powder right here. We just got done making and sifting out. And we have a spent shotgun shell here that we used in yesterday's video. And so the first thing we're gonna do is, and this is a very simple, simplistic kit to create. We just got something that we can stand this shell up on top of to give it space to remove that primer. We've got a very simple punch that we can put inside right on top of the primer. Tap it out. There's our spent primer. Then we're going to take a new primer. And I just keep some in this little tin right here for my reloading kit. Makes it real simple that way. We're just going to hand press that in just like this and then set it on that flat metal piece of strapping right there. I just take a piece of PVC piping that goes inside there and fits right over top of that. I think that's a piece of half inch PVC. Tap that down to seat the primer. Now that shell is ready to be reloaded, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a measure of powder. This is a measure. You can make this measure out of lots of different stuff. So I'm just gonna fill this measure up with powder. Put it in the shell. Now, you can use sheep's wool as a backing for this powder if you want to. Or you can take like a three quarter inch punch and you can get these off Amazon and you can punch yourself some cardboard plugs. And I just use a piece of dowel rod to push that down in there and pack it in tight. Just like that. Now my powder's packed in there. Then I use the same exact measure for the same volume of shot. Again, not weight volume this time. And I'm just going to fill that dude up with BBs. And I'm using steel BBs here. Now, once I've got that, I'm just gonna take another piece of cardboard and put it on top, just like this. Press it in really, really well. Just like that. And to seal it, I've just got a piece of glue stick here, a piece of black glue stick. And I'm just going to get that hot and run it around the inside of that shell, just like that, to seal it up. And for me, that's good enough. Now, I can carry that around with me as long as I need to before I shoot it, and it's ready to rock. When we're done, we got a shotgun shell that's ready to shoot. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I've got a funnel here, and I'm going to take this black powder from this holding container, And I'm going to funnel it into this container. You can buy these containers right off of Amazon, but it's just a plastic container that I can use to store my powder in when I make it. There we go. There's our usable black powder right there for our reloading kit. 
and we can take this back over to make another batch. All right, so there's our rat target right there. We'll shoot him from back here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom the camera in. All right, so there we are zoomed in on that bad boy. Let's see what we got here. All right, guys, so here's our rat. One, two, three, four, right in the kill, one in the neck. And a couple off to the side here, a few out here. A couple high spots here, but definitely dead rat at 20 yards. No question about it. All right, guys, listen, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School, and I appreciate your views, and I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.